IT before. Ooh, we're live. We are now. We got it. Yes. Is it already going? It's going. Hi, guys. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We, Natural Grocers doesn't have good Wi-Fi, but we got it figured out. But this is a nutrition research and education manager of Natural Grocers, and yeah. she's much more brilliant than I am, so That's she's going to show us around all of the supplement aisles at Natural Grocers. So we're going to break down all the barriers that you guys might have of fear, or what the hell kind of supplements should I get, or anything else. So we're going to start, and you guys can follow us along. Hello, huzzah! <laughs> Aisle 1 is the place to start. This is where all of our multivitamins are. In this store, every Natural Grocers is different, that's important to note. Um, one thing about the multivitamins is this is just the regular multivitamins. The women's multivitamins are in the women's section, and the men's multivitamins are in the men's health section. So. If you're looking for those, I get that question a lot at the store. Um, if you're looking for random herbs like Gymnema, Feverfew, Echinacea, and you're hunting around and sadly, you know, you can't really find anybody or you're too embarrassed to find someone to help you, finding the big herb sets is the place to go because they're all in alphabetical order. So you don't have to wander around if you find the big, so this is all of Nature's Way herbs, this is all of Solar Rays herbs. You have all of Gaia's herbs, and this is like, like, like the cheat code. The, so what's the big difference between, what's the big difference between like capsules versus tinctures? It depends, herbs? personal preference. Okay. Um, it will influence the rate at which they're absorbed, their bioavailability, so okay. the tinctures might work a lot quicker. Some people will okay. even just put it under, under their the tongue. tongue and it okay. absorbs directly into the bloodstream rather than having to go through the digestive tract. Cool. Um, the other thing is there are extracts and there are whole herbs. So some people believe that, you know, I want, um, you know, turmeric versus curcumin. They think that the only beneficial thing in turmeric is curcumin, so they just want curcumin and they'll find that on one side versus some people believe that you need to consume the entire herb to, you know, it's packaged perfectly right. as it is, so I want the whole herb. Um, so that's that's the difference between the different kind of colors on the shelves. And side note, curcumin is different than turmeric. So, not different, but it's like curcumin is a part of turmeric. It's the extract yeah. from turmeric. A lot turmeric. of people think that those are like, curcumin and turmeric are the same thing. Interchangeable. And yeah. Not. Yep, exactly. The same thing. Yep. The, on the other side of the wall, it's all the immune stuff. So, if, you know, it's cold and flu season, this is the place to come. Um, elderberry, Sambuku. What's the one that you like? Yeah, this one. This is like honey garden. This is my absolute syrup. favorite elderberry syrup. So it has. So there's some elderberry syrups that make you drowsy. I don't know which ones. Some of them will this say nighttime. One, Gaia. Mm -hmm. This one's great if you're like really sick and just like want to knock the hell out and you have a coughing <laughs> cold. Because this will make you sleepy. I don't know what in this makes you sleepy. Uh, but yeah. So we have these two at my house. And if you want to support your immune system during the day and still get elderberry syrup, we usually go for this. There's also propolis in this and raw honey and apple cider, so it's more than just elderberry. But those are my those are my two favorites. Another fun trick with elderberry syrup is to mix it with a little like lemon or lime LaCroix and make a little cocktail and then just kind of sip on it throughout the day. That's a really good idea. Then just to for overall immune support. Should we keep chugging? Let's keep chugging. Okay. This cooler has everything that needs to be refrigerated, specifically the refrigerated probiotics. You can see Garden of Life just kills it in the probiotic game. They're probably my favorite probiotics. If you're ever looking to try out a probiotic supplement, I think Garden of Life is a really great place to start. Um, but we do have shelf-stable probiotics as well. A lot of them have are put in containers that have desiccants. So that means that it's going to keep the moisture out of the probiotic capsules which is what we want, right? Which makes them shelf stable. Exactly. So the big difference is like the container that these are made out of versus the container that those are made out of. Yep. So there, cool. there will be a few less probiotic, so there will be a few less strains in the shelf stable ones okay. than in the refrigerated ones. Um, but for the, And then all of our cool. soil-based probiotics are usually on the shelf because they take our soil, so that makes sense. Sweet. And this one, I will defense, I feel like this is one that I took for a long time mm -hmm. and really liked. So if you guys are in Natty G's, that's what we call natural grocers. This is one of my personal faves. It's on sale. It is on sale. By a lot. Oh my gosh. Wait, is that this one? Is that this? So this is the normal price. Oh. Normally 
$33.74 on sale for $26.79. <laughs> yeah. But this is why I like natural groceries, because we usually have sales on normally expensive products. And but just to help navigate the aisles a little bit further, I'll plug our little EDAP tags. So EDAP stands for Everyday Affordable Prices. So this means that our purchasers work with the vendors to give us lower than wholesale price, and then we pass the savings on down to our customers. So Sweet. Um, if you see an EDAP tag, this means that this is probably the best price you're gonna find, even when it's not on sale. And sometimes the EDAP products do go on sale on top of that. Cool. So these are truly like the best price you're gonna find in town. Sweet. Yeah, should we keep going? These to are flax oils and omegas, right? Yep, these are flax. Uh, flax seed oil, hemp oil, our refrigerated fish oils. These are delicious. Have you ever tried the barleys? I had a customer come in forever ago looking for some kind of lime ice cream <laughs> topping, and I could not no. figure out what she was talking about for the life of me. She and was eventually, fish oil on her ice cream. She, this is that good. <laughs> It's that good, That's this lime fish oil. Nice. She was putting it on her ice cream. These are the people of natural groceries. They're great though. It's, have oh, you, you can them? taste it. You can try Should these. we do it right now? I've so never had this. Yeah, so I push the little dots together and it makes a spoon. I've literally never seen that before. Oh, it's like real. Okay. All right, so it's kind of thick. I can't believe somebody put this on their, it's on their delicious. ice cream. It's delicious, you just wait. That's really good. What is in that? There's not a lot of sugar. Yeah, you guys can see the ingredients. I mean, I would use that. Sweetened with xylitol. I think everybody has different opinions on xylitol, but... Mm -hmm. I buy this for my grandma to get her to take her fish oil. It's <laughs> yeah. like really good. I would it's put delicious. That. They've got pieces. I would put that on ice cream. Thank you. Okay. Have you ever heard that story? Yeah. It's a good one. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> so here's where kind of our homeopathics live. And then all of our heart health sections over here as well. So everything's kind of clumped to, to where it makes a lot of sense. So garlic, red yeast rice, CoQ10, that's all that you're going to find in the heart health section. And then this, the homeopathic section is kind of an extension of the immune health section. Um, homeopathics are kind of confusing on their own, but there's all of these little pull down things to help you figure out what you need. Otherwise, I'm sure someone in a blue apron would love to help you figure out yeah. how to how to read the chart or to point you in the right direction. Yeah, I literally don't know shit about homeopathics, so they're they're confusing. I feel like I'm more familiar with herbs. What's the difference between herbs and homeopathics? Homeopathics, um, they're different in all the ways. I can't really think of a way that they're comparable, other than sometimes they might have the same um, sources overall. But homeopathics are regulated by the FDA, so they're considered a drug. Wow. Uh, some, a lot of herbal supplements are not. Um, just, yeah. That's that's. They're just a whole different ball game. That's for sure. So clearly, I just need to like ask you guys. Boron online right? has a really great like certification training that you can take. It doesn't take very long. That teaches you like what is a homeopathic. Okay. What is what's the difference between 30C and 6C? Because you think 30C was more concentrated, but 6C is actually more concentrated. Interesting. It designates the number of times they diluted the original sample. Oh, wow. So this was only diluted six times, and this was diluted 30 times. Okay. So it's all, all the really the boron training. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. And I'll share that with you guys, too. Yeah, it's interested. really cool. Um, do you have any other questions on this aisle? I don't think so. On the flip side... You guys can ask questions, too. This is live, oh. so... And Rachel... Rachel's behind the camera videoing us. <laughs> Are she there works questions for on there? Not yet. Okay. Ask us some questions. Paula. This is for you guys. So Hooray. hit us up. I know it's also like pretty early on the west side of the United States. So it's fine. If you're on the east coast, ask us some questions if you're not at work. Do you have any questions about the tinctures or? Um, ooh, so this is kind of cool. If you guys are in Colorado, Wish Garden is a really cool um, company that does tinctures and herbs and a bunch of stuff. You probably mm -hmm. know a lot. Shelby probably we knows a lot more than me. We sell the Wish Garden at all of but our stores. Um, not just in Colorado. They have, pardon my French, they have Kick-Ass Immune, Kick-Ass Allergy. Pardon me. Um, yeah. yeah. So Kick-Ass Immune. This it's is really fun. great. Uh, mix it in with your tea or your coffee. Their owner is really cute. Mobetta Belly. That's good. You guys have digestive issues since everyone that follows me does. This stuff is amazing for digestion. Um, yeah. 
you just put it under your tongue, right? Yep, Three, or you four can mix droppers it in full with and a little bit of water. Kombucha, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good with kombucha. Um, but there you go. I have a question about suggestions for a general daily vitamin. Daily so, vitamin. We're in the right spot. Is it a female, male? It's we probably a woman. We've got, I have like 80%. Ruben the Blue Frenchie. That's my mother. Hi, oh. mom. <laughs> so women's health and children's health is in the same is in the same area. That makes a lot of sense, right? Because if we have busy moms with kids, they can come get their calm multivitamin and then also get their own multivitamin. My favorite women's multivitamins are Garden of Life's and Mega Foods. They're probably my favorite. Garden of Life and Mega Foods um, have all of the nutrients in their multivitamin in the form that we want them and sometimes they'll have them in multiple forms to improve their bioavailability and absorption um their gummies so taste really great as well all nutrients are different so i talk about this i've talked about this before in my stories you guys but there's a huge difference between the supplements that we're looking at now versus the things you're going to find at target and walgreens a lot of them are synthetic forms of vitamins that your body's not going to recognize and it's going to treat as a toxin and store it in your fat cells or do a bunch of other crazy shit in your body that you don't want to have happen, it's not beneficial. So this is why you want to come to a place like Natural Grocers because every supplement that they have, all the ingredients are in whole food form based ingredients that your body recognizes and can utilize. So that's what Shelby's referring to is like, all of this stuff is really great. We're very picky. These are, these are just some favorites, but. Natty G's is very picky about what can get on the shelves. Yeah. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. It's pretty hard to get in, that's for sure. Um, so for Caitlin's mom, Mama. I really, I really She's like over 50. Oh, I really love um, the Post. Garden of Life says 50 and wiser. I just love that. Acting. Mom, you're so wise. You should get me some. Ones. <laughs> Don't you love that? <laughs> That's really cool. 15 wiser. So the cool thing about this is that it has probiotics and enzymes and the multivitamins. So there's a lot. Because some getting a lot certain of stuff. multivitamins can give people tummy troubles. Yeah. And I think that those really are to help with with that. It's a lot of nutrients all at once. Yeah. So enzymes in a multivitamin is usually a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, but and I just got this is the prenatal that I just got you guys. Just kidding, those That's are gummies. Okay. I don't have the gummies. But they're really great. I got the prenatal once a day. And we're not we're not trying to have kids right away, but it's good to build your nutrient stores for a few years before you do start to try to have kids, so just be more intentional about that. Should we but move in case on you're looking at that to the next aisle? Okay. What aisle are we on? Aisle three. So this is where all the fish oil is. Um, Good old fish oil. You have a favorite and I have a favorite. So do you want to talk about your favorite first? Sure. So my favorite is down on the bottom here. It is called Carlson Labs Fish Oil. It tastes like lemon. I feel like people are really geeked out when they see the oil itself. They don't want to drink it. They don't like the consistency. If that's you, you can get capsules. But I always prefer the oil because that's going to stimulate the gallbladder and the liver to release bile to emulsify fats. Whereas when you have a capsule, you don't taste that in your mouth, and so it might take a little bit longer to digest. Um, and I don't know what you think of that. That might be more of a theory, but that's what we talked about in NTP, and that's what I know. So I usually suggest that if people can handle the oil itself, to just do that. So this oil tastes like lemon. After you pop it open, you just put it in the fridge. I literally will just drink this. Just take like a swig of it. I don't measure it out. So that's my go-to. That's a good one. But what's your... So my favorite brand is Nordic Naturals, if just for fish oil specifically. And my favorite of their products is this DHA Extra. So sometimes you can find fish oils um, that have just DHA or just EPA. And to back up, uh, the reason that we buy fish oil is for the omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA. And so this still has a lot of EPA. It has 410 milligrams per serving. Um, studies kind of show that EPA is what supports our heart health and that's kind of its focus. DHA yep. is all about the brain. And so I'm 27. I'm not super concerned with heart health yet. I think I'll be okay, but I am concerned <laughs> with brain health just with like mood support, um, yep. focus and concentration. So I love this because it just has extra, it has extra <laughs> DHA, but it still has EPA and it's strawberry flavored. So it's really yummy. And most people, I will say, this is something that I like, is one thing that I feel like is a supplement everyone should be taking 
is omega-3 fatty acids because the standard American diet, most of the foods that we eat um, are really high in omega-6s and we need a proper ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s to have a proper systemic inflammatory response. Mm -hmm. So we have these really great little hormone-like things in our body called prostaglandins. If you guys want to look more into that, you can. But prostaglandins are kind of the little guys that like, when you bump something or if there's inflammation in the body, they kind of run over and raise a flag and they're like, hey, like we've got some inflammation over here that you guys need to deal with. And if we don't have a proper ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s, then prostaglandins can't say, hey, there's inflammation. So we can get this like big buildup of systemic inflammation. So yep. we have a question. What's the question? Could you take the fish oil in capsule form and take a dose of bitters at the same time for the gallbladder and liver stimulation? Absolutely. That's actually a great idea. I don't think that that should be problematic yeah. at all. Yeah, because bitters are just going to stimulate. If you guys aren't familiar with bitters, bitters, digestive bitters specifically, help to stimulate all the different organs that release digestive enzymes. So what she's referring to is taking those bitters will stimulate the liver and gallbladder to release enzymes to help break down that gel capsule. So that's a really great idea. I learned that artichoke does that a couple weeks ago too. Huh. Eating a lot of artichoke stimulates bile production, which is fun. People need that. So, so we kind of talked about how fish oil, uh, EPA, DHA, DHA is important for the brain. So it kind of makes sense that next comes the brain health section. Uh, my favorite product in the brain health section is any of the phosphatidylserine supplements. Phosphatidylserine is a phospholipid that helps hold the EPA and DHA in place in our brain cells. Um, and there's a product called Sharp Thought down here that's essentially phosphatidylserine with EPA and DHA already put into its little phospholipid structure. So awesome. Um, Really, really cool. So it makes sense, right? Fish oil, everything here makes a lot of sense. And then the Phosphatidyl, brain tell, go ahead. Just side note real quick. Yeah. Phosphatidyl serene is also really great for people that have anxiety and are really keyed up and their HPA access is a little out of whack. I, when I was having really bad panic attacks last year, I was taking a lot of phosphatidyl serene before bed because it can make you feel a little, it make you feel a little funny if you haven't taken it and you're not used to it. So if you do start taking this, not, not just to support brain health, um, but to support other parts of the body, because it's these phospholipids are a part of every single cell, so it helps repair every single cell in our body and not just brain health. Um, but yeah, you can use this for anxiety stuff too, but I would take it at night, starting out. Yeah. That's what I've always heard, because when mm -hmm. I first started taking this and I would take it in the day, I would get this weird wave of like, I, uh, just felt really odd, but maybe that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's normal or not. Yeah, I haven't heard of that, but that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and then so that's brain health. So this is like nootropics, things to support memory, attention, focus, what have you. And then next comes the mood and sleep section. So you can see it just all makes sense. The supplement aisles are put together logically um, if you kind of know what you're looking for. So this is where you're going to find the Sammy, Kava Kava, Holy Basil, L-theanine, and then the melatonin supplements and 5-HTP are over here. Amber Dutra just signed on. Hi Amber. Hi Amber. She should come join us. So in terms of anxiety and stuff, everyone's different. One thing that I personally have really liked and used a lot of is Pharma GABA. So Pharma GABA. A lot of these are chewable tablets. You can chew on them. There's some studies that say GABA is just as effective as Xanax on our neurotransmitters to help us relax. There's also a lot of studies that say if you are feeling relaxed by taking GABA that you have a leaky brain because the blood-brain barrier is not there. Interesting. Very fascinating stuff. We're getting really nerdy on this live, but I'll have to share more information about that with you guys. But that works for me, and I've talked about Pharma GABA before. Interesting. But blood-brain barrier. Was but there anyway. anything else in the mood and sleep? 5-HTP I feel like is the most common mood enhancer for anxiety and depression and like really anything else this is another thing that I started taking um, but at night because it can make you feel a little odd but just depends on the person everyone's different so mm -hmm. and melatonin you don't want to get too hooked on I actually usually suggest that people start with magnesium before bed before melatonin because magnesium is a precursor to melatonin um, and sometimes if we take melatonin consistently too much, it can kind of downregulate our body's natural system of creating melatonin. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah. So on the flip side of this, is there a question? 
There was a question about digestion. I didn't know if you were going to go there next. Um, go there. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. Sure. Well, well, the things behind us are joint health joint and inflammation, health and which also makes a lot of sense that they're together, right? Yeah. yeah. And then what nutrient do you think is the majority of the inflammation section? Probably collagen. Inflammation section, probably yeah. curcumin. And yeah, there you go. I was like, I was, I was looking was at, I was looking at joint health. I was like, yeah. Collagen. There's like a whole set just of turmeric curcumin. So, <laughs> <laughs> <Off> to <to-digest. laughs> So the question is, let me scroll back and find it. What should we look for in a digestive enzyme, and where do we find them at natural grocers? You find them on the back wall. Sometimes. It'll be in the digestive aid section. Yep. Probably near the probiotics cooler. In most stores, if you can find the probiotics cooler, you're probably really close to the digestive section. So we were actually just talking about this before we started the live, but my one of my personal favorites is this Enzymetica. And there's like a shit, shit ton of them. Um, they're slightly different. So there's like regular digest, there's digest gold, there's Digest Gold with Probiotics, there's Digest Spectrum. These all mean different things. So I really like Digest Gold. It has this extra ATP Pro in there, which gives you a little bit of magnesium and phytase and CoQ10 and some other different awesome things. Um, the only thing that I will say, and Shelby and I were just talking about this, that I don't like about this digestive enzyme is that it doesn't have HCL built in. So most people that need a digestive enzyme not only are lacking digestive <coughs> enzymes, but they're also lacking proper amounts of hydrochloric acid to properly break down proteins. And the stomach needs to be at a proper pH for it to continue on into the small intestine. And the sphincter at the bottom of the stomach will wait until the pH of the stomach is super acidic before it allows food to continue on. And so oftentimes it's the pH of the stomach that causes that bloating and that discomfort. It's kind of the stomach just like waiting for the pH to get there. So digestive enzymes are great, but I would suggest pairing that with an HCL supplement. Um, or if you can find, we were talking about this before, we were trying to find a supplement here that has HCL mixed in. Um, but for a lot of people, just the enzymes are enough. Um, but if you wanna go the extra mile, you can do that. And there's different milligrams for HCL. And you probably, I usually suggest people don't go over 650. So you could take two of these if you want, or there's also 650 milligrams. You could just do one of these. It just kind of depends what what your need is. But and yeah. that's a big paradigm shift for people to overcome these because the, yeah. the current paradigm is antacids, and that's yeah. sort of the go-to for any kind of intestinal discomfort. Um, and you're here telling them that you need more, you need more acid. acid. You need to supplement with HCL, right. which is acid. Um, but it's interesting, and if anybody ever you know has questions about that obviously reach out to Kate um, or at all of our stores we have customer literature files if you just want to, some couple hours of reading yep and there is natural antacid reliefs here so if you just want that pain to go away like that pain feeling sensation you can get some of these they actually a lot of these do have enzymes in them already um, things like papaya um, you can even see this one's called acid relief with enzymes. So very different thought process mm -hmm. of how. And this is one thing that really pisses me off about the medical community <laughs> is if you understand the physiology of the digestive system, it's ridiculous to say that acid reflux is too much stomach acid. It's literally like, so the reason why this happens is that there's a sphincter on top of the stomach and it's the only one that opens up and down. It opens in both directions so that we can burp, we can throw up the contents of our stomach if we're sick. Um, and so if the pH of the stomach is not getting to that correct point, we're gonna have food that's like bloating, it's fermenting, it's uncomfortable. The only direction for that to go to release that, that bloating that's happening is up. And that's when we get the contents of the stomach pushing up through the esophagus. And that's what that burning is. It's like a low, mild grade amount of stomach acid in the esophagus. Like if we had the proper amounts of stomach acid in the esophagus, it would like completely kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it would like dissolve your esophagus. So most people and most doctors will not test you for how much stomach acid you have. So if you are having acid reflux and you go to a doctor, ask them to get tested for your stomach acid because it's probably actually too low. But we know that already. So we give you guys this stuff. When is the best time to take digestive enzymes and HCL? Before a meal? I 
would follow the instructions on the label. I think most of the time, especially if it's like the enzymes needed to digest food better, I think it's right before a meal. Um, yeah. But per usual, I would just follow the instructions on the bottle so you don't have to remember. Yeah, I agree. I also usually, I do digestive enzymes like 10 to 15 minutes before a meal. If you forget it, it's not a big deal. These things are going to help equalize your whole stomach out. So I, Stu and I have even had times where like we eat a big ass meal and I'm like, oh my god, this is so much food. I'm going to die. Like I'll pop an HCL to just like help my stomach break things down after we've eaten. Mm -hmm. And you should notice that bloating go away pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, so you can do... Whenever you remember, if you're taking them, that's good <laughs> for most people. That's funny. Um, we got a few more aisles that we're gonna just kind of zip through here because almost done. Digestion's a hot. Digestion's a hot topic. Yeah. Um, where are greens. We? So here's our greens section. Uh, it's kind of split into our blends and our chlorophyll supplements. We have the sea-based supplements, so the algae, the kelp, spirulina, what have you. And then our grasses, so alfalfa, barley grass, etc. And these all these all do different things. If you want to get specific, you can get specific grasses. If you're looking for just a generic overall good greens supplement to get, I really like Amazing Grass. Um, like really any of these products. And I think one of the biggest questions that people ask me is if um, wheat grass is gluten free. Yes, it is. It's the grass. It's not the grain. So if you're gluten free, celiac. These things are completely okay for you. Yep. And if you're super concerned, a lot of the wheatgrass supplements will pay to get the gluten-free seal, and that also ensures that it was produced in a gluten-free certified facility. It's been tested. Yep. They'll pay the extra to get it go. certified. Yep. Um, moving on, this is the bee products. Did you have something to say about bee products, don't you? I do. Yeah, I really like it. Propolis is one of my favorite things ever. So propolis is essentially the immune system of the bee. Um, bees are fascinating, fascinating little creatures. Um, so propolis is really great to support the immune system of our cells. Royal jelly is also kind of known as like a, an anti-aging supplement. It does a lot of other things too, but royal jelly, all these things are really fun little immune supports. I want to back over really quick to um, chlorophyll. So those of you coming to Colorado, those of you in Colorado going to Elevation, this is one of my favorite supplements for going to Elevation. It's called Chlor Oxygen. And this is because Shelby, Shelby explains this a lot better than me. <laughs> but chlorophyll is very similar in structure to hemoglobin. Yes. So it helps build red blood cells and oxygen in the bloodstream so it that can you can... Help oxygenate the blood. Yes. So these are some of my favorites. They will turn your stool green. Just FYI, so don't be surprised it's when you're like, of. when you're like, whoa, I didn't eat a lot of spinach yesterday. <laughs> That's um, what it was. <laughs> it's probably the That's what it was. Um, so, amino acids, and then we've got some MCT oil over here as well. They're in alphabetical order, so that should make them easy to navigate, right? L-arginine, carnitine, GABA, you can kind of see yep. their, their, their alphabetical order, and then um, everyone who has digestive problems, L-glutamine is a really great gut healing nutrient. And this, the cool thing is that collagen, if you're going for gut healing, collagen has all the most abundant amino acids already in that supplement. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of get all of these mm -hmm. when you take collagen. If yeah. you look at the back of it, you'll see all, like, all of these things. Um, but these are also great to support mental health if you're doing amino acid therapy, mm -hmm. supporting mood, energy, anxiety, depression. Yeah. They're, they're unique and their amino acids are fascinating. Um, so MCT oil is really hot right now. It's real popular. Um, Garden of Life came out with a new MCT oil that's entirely from coconut. A lot of MCT oils, you kind of want to be a little bit careful because they might have palm oil in them and mm -hmm. coconut oil. And then another one of my favorite products, this just came out by Ancient Nutrition. Oh, cool. Um, so it's Dr. Axe brand, if you'd like Dr. Axe. So Keto Fire is a keto salt. So it's um, essentially keto like supplementing salt. with beta, beta hydroxybutyrate. So it's uh, oh, like what? you supplement with MCT oil or uh, whatever to get ketones automatically. And so this is this, another way to just uh, amp up your ketone production. It's in a salt form. So it's, it's new and it's interesting. If you're interested in like just jumping into ketosis right away. 
Which can sometimes suck and you can get the keto flu. Yep. But does this stuff help kind of minimize keto flu mm -hmm. and it gets you into that process faster? Yep, yep. Keto people. Yeah, it's a really cool product. It's really interesting. So I'm sure that more products will follow suit with that. Cool. Okay. Electrolytes. This is actually, guys, I talked about this in a... What did I just talk about this in? Blog post. Another thing that's good for altitude and hydration is making sure you have proper amounts of electrolytes. This is my favorite one. They have it at Natty G's. It's Trace Minerals, 40,000 volts. They also have one that's just regular Trace Minerals and they're essentially the same thing. The Trace Minerals one is just more concentrated, I believe. But mm -hmm. you just add this to your water because if you're just drinking water, cells don't hydrate just because you have water in your body. You need proper amounts of electrolytes for those cells to pull in water and actually hydrate you on a cellular level. So get your electrolytes. Yes. To the next one. I think we're on the almost last aisle. We're almost done. We're almost. These are the proteins. Um, they're split into animal-based proteins over here. Animal-based. So these are our whey proteins. We have egg white proteins for those paleo folks. And then on <laughs> this side paleo. are all of the plant-based proteins. So pea proteins. We have some soy proteins. Etc. Etc. What is your favorite? Let's go over a quick. One favorite animal protein. One favorite plant protein. What's your? Because you were talking about whey the other day that you really love. Yeah, I really love. So Biochem is by Country Life. Um, I love their whey proteins. They have really high standards. It's grass fed. Um, it's a solid product for a really great price point. Cool. And then I. Yeah, Terrace Way, I actually did a lot of Terrace Way when I was doing a lot of dairy in college and was like training a shit ton, so I really like Terrace Way. In terms of plant-based stuff, um, I actually just got this vanilla hemp protein just to try it. Um, haven't tried it yet, so I'll keep you guys updated on that. But I really like Vega sport proteins. Yep, Vega is probably my favorite plant-based protein. Um, it not only does it, does it have protein, but you can kind of see along the bottom, it has fiber, vitamins, greens, uh, more antioxidants, probiotics, etc. It's very low in sugar and it's really delicious. I loved to do the chocolate vega with a banana and some ice and water and like the magic bullet in the morning and like chocolate hit the road. Smoothie. Yeah, it's really great. And then a weirdly, the vanilla protein goes really well with orange juice in Yum. a shaker bottle. It's really delicious. And so. it's cool because like I feel like a lot of other protein companies besides Vega, though they like you have to buy the whole freaking jug and if you don't like it, that sucks and you're probably just gonna give it to one of your bodybuilding friends. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about Vega is they have these little packets so you can like try yep. the things instead of like jump in with both feet. Exactly. Same with Garden try of Try one of each flavor and then see which one you like best before you make a commitment to an entire tub. That's right. Yeah. And I usually just use Vital Proteins Collagen because yeah. it's easiest for me. Yep. Whey doesn't sit well with me anymore. I love Big. I'll use that every once in a while, yeah. but I just, I always have The collagen. bone broth protein powders are gaining in popularity, and this is a new product as well that um, could be beneficial for people that yeah, got little don't do well with dairy. Um, and it's also by Ancient Nutrition, the same company that did those keto fires. So they're really kind of on the cutting edge. Super clean. If you guys want my stamp of approval, I would use this stuff. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I use like everything in natural grocery stores. We had a store that sold out of their ancient nutrition, like right when it right when it came out. It was kind of nuts. Guys, we're on the last one. I'm surprised there's still a lot of people watching, huh? 25. Damn, kicking ass. That's a lot of people. So this end cap is our liver support. So this is where you're gonna find milk thistle and a couple of different like detox packages. Milk thistle supports you know, just about every aspect of liver health and it um, increases the production of a naturally occurring antioxidant called glutathione. So it's a rock star. Um, I actually just started trying this Gaia product. It's like three capsules after dinner and that's it. So yeah. I've also heard that it can help support smooth and healthy skin. Makes sense, right? If it's supporting your liver, you're gonna have better skin. That's right, because the skin is known as the second liver in holistic go. health. Because if the liver is clogged up, not properly detoxifying, that's when we see a lot of skin conditions. Digestive health is involved in that too, but the yeah. liver is also involved in digestive health. It's all one thing, you yeah. guys. Yeah, everything begins in the gut. Um, right. So lastly, we deem this the wall in a lot of our stores. It's called the wall, but this is all of our letter vitamins. 
So vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C. Our B vitamins are all living in here. They're gonna all be in the same place. So kind of like with the digestive things, um, if you find one letter vitamin, you're close to finding all of them, <laughs> right? Yeah, Rachel nodded her head. Um, so did you wanna talk about like your favorite B vitamin or sure. what have you? So the new hot thing right now, I think with B vitamins and the most important, most talked about B vitamins, B12. And I usually suggest that unless people have genetic mutations on their methylation pathways, unless they have something, um, you know, screwed up with their genetics, methyl B12 is like the, the standard mm -hmm. in this Jaro formula I know Shelby really likes, she told me about. So the only difference is this is a methylated form of B12. So it's kind of, there's all these different things that need to happen in order for our body to properly create certain nutrients and vitamins from our food, even though it's in there, we need them for all these different cellular processes. And so it's a chain reaction of different things happening. And methylated forms of, I'm like still holding this. Would you like me to hold it? Thanks mom. <laughs> <laughs> but methylated forms of B vitamins especially, um, and methyl B12 is super bioavailable. It's already like pre-digested. It's got like all these great, things in it and I'm being really vague because I don't want to make this too complicated because methylation is really complicated so we'll just leave it at that this is the ideal form of B12 that your body is most likely going to very willingly accept if you're deficient and I'm just gonna plug because I've tried them and they're delicious mega foods just came out with gummies and their ginger B12 gummy is so good I could eat like a whole container of them I don't do that you don't do that don't eat a whole container of them but I just want to highlight <laughs> how yummy this. they are they're very very good um, I got this question yesterday too in terms of vitamins and minerals so vitamins a d e and k are fat soluble vitamins if you like OD on those even though you can't really like overdose on vitamins but if you get too many and you go over the tolerable limit it can make you sick because fat soluble vitamins will store in your fat cells in your body mm -hmm. but water soluble vitamins like A and B and C and pretty much all the other vitamins if you have too much in the body you'll pee them out that's why a lot of people and I've had a lot of people and clients ask me this like I'm peeing neon yellow and neon green is that normal it's usually excess a B complex yeah Yep. Very common with B complex. It's very common with multivitamins. So don't freak out about it. Your body's like, cool, we're good on this. Let's get rid of the rest. Granted, uh, there is such a thing with vitamin C called bowel tolerance. So, uh, so a lot of times people will try to like get up to those high levels of supplementing with vitamin C for whatever reason. Um, and it's important to start <laughs> low and go slow because if you start off with like 40,000 milligrams of vitamin C, you will exceed bowel tolerance and you'll probably call in sick for more just like have really bad diarrhea yeah okay so yep. titrate onto your high vitamin c when you're sick yes just <laughs> that's the thing is a lot of studies will be like we supplemented to bowel tolerance it's in and everything oh yeah vitamin c um there's one form of vitamin c that that's not a thing with um is it the ester c what's the form liposomal liposomal vitamin c that's the one that Bowel so does that mean that isn't a thing. It's mixed into a fatty acid. It is emulsified. Microliposomal. Cool. Yeah. Interesting fact cool. of the day. Very cool. So if you don't want to poop your pants but you want a light of vitamin C, do the liposomal vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. I hair, think, skin, nail stuff. Yep. It's by vitamin E, which is also great for your skin. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. If anyone took gel gelatin and collagen before vital proteins and ancient nutrition, like, totally stole the wraps. Great Lakes. This is some old gangster shit that is really good, really high quality. I feel like A this A lot of brand, people still swear by that. Yes, I feel like this brand, like, totally got kicked off the market once vital proteins and, like, collagen and all that stuff, like, blew up. But, like, this was the OG... <laughs> I feel, to me, it feels like the OG brand. Yeah, and no, it's, it's an old school brand. Still stuff that and I will You grab. can tell customers that come in and they like beeline it for that stuff and they have no yeah. idea what ancient nutrition and vital oh. protein are. Yeah. Like, they don't have these, Instagram. These young millennial weirdos. Yeah. Okay, so we are at the end. If you guys want to ask a few questions like super quick, go ahead and ask like literally right now. If not, we're going to go because this has been a really long live and I'm so excited that so many of you watched. Bye. And this is like one of many fun little informative 
videos that we'll do here for you guys. So the cool thing that I really like about Nashua Grocers, and I am partnered with them, I am paid to work with them, but like I told you guys, it's a really awesome partnership that just flows seemingly with what I already do, and I really appreciate all of your support. Um, but Natural Grocers is so focused on education, so everything that we're doing today is like something that they wanted me to do. So it's stuff that you guys are interested in, it's helpful information. This is why I love Natural Grocers is because it's a community-based grocery store. It's like very intentional, very high standards. I know I can come in here and grab anything that I want, and I don't have to read the ingredients. I mean, I still do, but I don't have to be worried about anything because I know these guys have already vetted the crap out exactly. of products for me. And so. the last thing I want to say is all of the supplement, it, su su uh, supplement sections in every store are very different. And some people are like weird about not asking for help, but if you find someone in an apron, maybe them. time them and like say, find, pick a random thing and see how <laughs> fast they can find it because they know the supplement sections like the yeah. back of their hands. And if you just want them to show you where it is and leave you alone, they'll do that too. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah. Do hey. we have questions? What is your favorite supplement? My favorite oh. supplement. That's a massive question. What? Mm, I like literally don't know. I try not to take a lot of supplements. I think my personal favorite for myself and for clients and probably the most suggested that I'm suggesting to people are that Enzymetica um, digestion one because everything starts in the gut. You can have the best diet, take all the best supplements in the world, but if you're not properly digesting your nutrients, it doesn't matter. So I would say that's probably my favorite. I'm a big fish oil fan. That's the one that <laughs> I like. Lime. If I run, I, I might have to go get thank that. You. Really <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's really good. Question about bone broth. Which one should I buy, or where can I get good quality bones to make my own? Um, oftentimes, so I the first thing that I would suggest is try to find bones. Um, I have actually a link on my website. If you go to whatkate8.com, go to resources. There's a drop down list, and It'll tell you like, and I forget specifically what link it is on my resources tab, but it's like, it'll tell you where to find, it'll take you to a website to show you where to find all of the local farms, local um, farmers markets, things like that. So I would suggest trying to link up with a farmer in your area um, to get bones directly from. It's really important to support our local farmers so that we don't lose the quality standards of properly raised animals and super high quality grass fed bones. That would be my number one. Number two, just go to your regular grocery store, go to the butcher area and be like, hey, do you guys have any like marrow bones and feet and this and that? Like you feel weird doing that, but who cares? So I do that. Or I really like also good bones, bone broth. And you guys have bonafide provisions. Which is in the freezer. Which is in the freezer. And you actually need vitamin C to properly utilize collagen yep. in the body. So if you're doing bone broth, you can take vitamin C at the same time. Yep. But any other questions? That's it. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs>